Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the internuclear ophthalmoplegia and the one and half syndrome. Cranial nose part 37, oclomotor nose part 23. Internuclear ophthalmoplegia or INO. Internuclear disorders affect the connections between the oclomotor nuclei. That is the third, fourth and sixth nerve in the brainstem. We have the oclomotor nerves, third, fourth and sixth nerves. We have a tract connecting the third, fourth and sixth nerves. That is the medial longitudinal fasciculus and we have the supranuclear pathways of the third, fourth, sixth nerves. So a lesion in the oclomotor nerves could be supranuclear pathways. That is the supranuclear pathways affecting the third, fourth and sixth nerves like saccadic pathway or pursuit pathway. Or the tract which connects the third, fourth and sixth nerves that is the MLF which we call as internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Or the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves per se. So internuclear ophthalmoplegia, what does it imply? It implies internuclear disorders that affect the connection between the ocular motor nuclei in the brainstem. Lesions of the medial longitudinal fasciculus cause an INO, internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Failure of the medial rectus to adduct is an isolated abnormality in the affected eye. Normality of the lid and the pupil distinguish an INO from third nerve palsy. Third nerve palsy also can cause medial rectus weakness. INO also causes impairment of erection. So how do we differentiate? If it is only INO, there is normality of the lid and the pupil which distinguish an INO from the third nerve palsy. INOs due to multiple sclerosis are usually bilateral and seen in young patients. Those due to brainstem vascular diseases are more often unilateral and seen in older patients. So how, we, how do we differentiate INOs in the young from the old? In the young, it is usually due to multiple sclerosis and they are bilateral. In the old, it is due to vascular disease and it is usually unilateral. Despite impaired adduction on horizontal gaze, some patients with INO are still able to converge. Despite impaired adduction on horizontal gaze, some patients with INO are able to converge. INOs therefore have been divided into those with and without preservation of convergence. The convergence centers are in the midbrain and when adduction on convergence is impaired, the INO may be classified as rostral or anterior. But when convergence is preserved, the INO may be classified as caudal or posterior. Now we are going to see a very very fascinating syndrome, the one and half syndrome. One and half syndrome, as you can see in the diagram, one and half movements are affected. So one and half syndrome is due to a combined lesion of the MLF and the PPRF on the same side. The patient's only horizontal eye movement is abduction of the eye on the other side that too there is nystagmus. Imagine we will take this eye. The PPRF is affected and MLF is affected. If the PPRF is affected, the eyes cannot be drawn towards its side. So one movement is affected, the half movement that is the lateral rectus and the half movement on the other side that is the medial rectus. So PPRF is affected, one whole movement is lost. The right side lateral rectus and left side medial rectus, half plus half, one movement is lost. When the MLO, when the MLF, medial long fasciculus gets affected, half movement that is adduction is affected, which we call as internuclear ophthalmoplegia. So half movement is affected. So when there is a combined lesion of the PPRF and MLF, PPRF one movement is gone, MLF half movement is gone and therefore only half movement is present what we call as one and half syndrome. 
and that too in that half moment there is nystagmus what we call it as an abducting nystagmus why is there nystagmus in the abducting eye it is because of the law herring's law of equal and dual innervation the yoke muscles get equal innervation so the yoke muscles are the medial rectus on this side and lateral rectus on the other side so when the medial rectus gets impaired there is more impulses coming as compensation to the lateral rectus and it results in nystagmus so one and half syndrome implies a lesion of pprf and mlf wherein one and half movements are gone and only half movement is present on other side and that too there is nystagmus because of herring's law of equal and dual innervation so very interesting and fascinating clinical syndrome one and half syndrome the other important concepts of neurology i have put it in a question and answer format in the book focused neurology written by me dr srinivas it is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon if interested it could be bought online if you have enjoyed listening to this video the horizontal gaze palsies the one and half syndrome uh, please like it share the link to your friends and do subscribe my youtube channel dr sinos medical concepts and my page dr sinos concepts thank you